All right, this is 3 o'clock hour, and we are joined by a national champion, NFL tight end Mark Vidal, former Baylor star, was a part of the national championship, got the ring on Saturday. He was there to watch Baylor beat up Texas, but also there to also see how the season changed quite a bit with Jonathan John Wachacha. Well, we'll get into the ring and all of that in a minute. Mark, thank you very much for your time with Craig and Paul, David Smoke. You were a part of a team that had to redo themselves when the uh, – the loss of Tristan Clark took place. Can you take us back to that time? And do you feel like Baylor can do something similar now that JTT is gone? Man, I don't think I'm going to say this, man. We got a strong, 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 you know, decision to make right now, like a really good chance that uh, a lot of things are going to change. Like I had to play the five when Tristan went down, uh, as you can remember. Um I feel like we can do it. I mean, at the end of the day, man, Flo Thumba is doing a good job. Like, from uh, watching him the whole season, seeing him stepping up in his role. And when John went down, he stepped up a little, you know, some more. Uh, he played big boy basketball against Texas. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, the season comes with adjustments and things happen. But uh, we got a good enough team to do that. Mark, you told us a story about Flo before the national championship game in which, you know, he – he he entered that game playing playing angry, for lack of a better term. Does he right. play better when he plays? I mean, because he's not ever an out of control guy. He's very even keeled. But when he plays a little bit pissed off, man, when he plays pissed off, he's a different animal. Uh, I, I, like I said, man, he's just, he's a different animal. Uh, I got so much confidence in Flo. Um, a lot of teams like him when he kind of calm because at the end of the day, they know when they get the bad side of him, they're just like anybody else. It's like the incredible heart coming out of him. So uh, when uh, Flo gets get mad and gets to playing, man, it's over with. Mark, how did you guys kind of deal with, with things that would come along the way, like injuries when they would creep up? I mean, what did you guys do as uh, locker room leaders to, 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 you know, kind of talk to each other and figure out how you were going to figure it out? Yeah, man. So, like, we always trusted the coaches, man. Coach Drew and Coach Chang and the whole coaching staff always did, like, a good job making adjustments as far as, you know, when somebody's getting hurt. I remember when I was on the team with uh, me, Makai, Tris. So also, how can we keep our, uh, our brother in good spirits? Mark Vidal, uh, Kansas City Chiefs tight end with a Sikkim 365 radio and 365 sports. The uh, team has had to deal with injuries almost every other week. And obviously, last year, you guys were pretty fortunate uh, throughout the year, other than the COVID setback, which did set you back a little bit. What does it say about the resiliency of this team? Sohan out. And then it's... Uh, well, it, it, Cryer or Flagler, and now Jonathan John Wachachua, Kenjo with the broken, I mean, with the uh, the bruised tailbone. What does it say? Man, like I said, man, everybody is, uh, this is this is basketball, this is sports, you know, injuries happen. Um, it's just that guys just need to step up. Guys need to uh, change their role up a little bit and make adjustments. That's what it comes down to, you know what I'm saying? Like, with us, when a lot of guys was getting hurt, uh, it's more so just us just locked in on, okay, what's the adjustment? How can we beat the team sticking to the game plan and trusting the coaches even more? So this is when the coaches made those big adjustments and the players got to trust the coaches on this. Mark, what did you think about what you saw against Texas on Saturday? I loved it, man. It was so much energy in there, man. They played some good basketball, good defense, man. Uh, Matt uh, was extremely well. You know, Matt did a great job. Uh, I talked to him before, beforehand telling him that, man, Tonight, I want to see you do a little more rebounding, doing different things. And, man, he just – he stepped up in that row. I've seen before John, uh, you know, had a season injury, which has hurt my heart. But before he was done, um, he was running the floor, jumping, everything. And I love – like I said, I love that point guard, man. He, you know, facilitating, getting, you know, the dish note, everything, getting everybody involved. And I could talk about Adam all day, but I've been talking about Adam since last year. I've been telling you all how good Adam's going to be. And, you know, it's just a team just needs to be healthy. Once our team was healthy, nobody can beat us. You know, there's just so many injuries right now that send us back a little bit. But once we get a 100% team, man, I'm telling you, we're going to go on a big run in that tournament. Are you so, Are you the self-professed uh, Adam Flagler fan club president? Oh, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Like I've been saying, man, I've been telling you in every interview, man, Adam Flagler is the guy y'all need to watch. Adam Flagler. And LJ Carr are going to be the ones that's going to come in and show you guys when we leave, you know, that this is it. This is what this culture is. And they kept the culture going. And other guys have kind of followed, followed in line with that. 
What do you think of the freshmen, Kendall Brown and, and Jeremy Sohan? Uh, Jeremy Sohan uh, has got a little bit of a uh, little bit of, of Mark Vital in him that he 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 doesn't really care what he has to do. He just goes and does it. Man, he's a better shooter than me. <laughs> <laughs> he's a better shooter than me, man. He's a real, he, I mean, as far as everything goes, man, he does a good job. Uh, he he does the dirty work. He cleans up everything. He cleans up the board. And, you know, I've been knowing Kendall since he was a little younger. And uh, I was an idol for Kendall. And I talked to him before the season, man. Just told him, man, just be you. Be the best you. Lock in. And, you know, continue to play with energy and having fun. And that's the two differences right there, man. The two guys play with fun. You were on the sidelines, Kansas City and uh, Cincinnati, in that AFC championship game, and I know that that didn't end the way you guys wanted. What were your thoughts? How much of the game? Did you watch all of it or just some of it? Was it hard to watch? No, I was on the sideline watching the whole game, studying and learning, man. Like I said, when we was up 21-0, I still was saying, like, that's a lot of time on the clock. Travis was saying that's a lot of time on the clock, of course, to stay locked in. And um, like I said, man, we didn't, we didn't quite get what we wanted, but at the end of the day, you know, everything happened. For a reason, we're gonna come back next year and win. Hopefully, I'm on that field next year. Well, Mark, uh, I, I I did uh, I, I texted Smokey right during that. We saw that look on your face, which I said, "There's a guy who hates, hates losing, lose. yeah, because we never never see that." And two, you were in the right spot. You're following around right. Travis Kelsey, which is where you need to be uh, if you're gonna uh, learn how to be an NFL tight end. What's your relationship been like with him these few months Man. that you've been there? Man, Charles has been a big mentor. Like he, like normally you see guys coming up just for business, and you only see them at business. But now Travis, I can call him anytime in the middle of the night. I can call him whenever just to talk about stuff. Me and him had deep conversations uh, about my transition when I was down a couple times and wonder if if I made the right choice and everything. But he's been like he's been like a big brother, man. Just not Travis. It's been everybody, you know, from uh, Patrick all the way down to Ty Matthews. Like all those guys been like a big help. You know what I'm saying? And just mm-hmm. Trusting me and just, you know, telling me what I can do and just telling me to trust my process, which is crazy because I feel like it's another red shirt chip. Like, you know, he's more like an Ishmael Wainwright to me mm-hmm. on the football side. I mean, what was, I mean, what's that kind of life change been like, Mark, to find yourself, you know, filling up basketball arenas and, you know, playing, you know, college basketball to all of a sudden you're on the sidelines of the AFC championship game. You're playing with Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey and Tyreek Hill and, like just a star-studded roster, just can you even try to put into words what like the journey and then the transition has been like? Uh, cold. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I had to say that, man. The weather's a little different out there. <laughs> it's a little different. <laughs> we playing inside. I was cold a little bit. Now I'm outside, and it's cold and all kinds of other stuff. But other than that, man, it's just like I said, man. It, mm. I was starstruck at first. You know, I ain't going to lie to you. When I first seen Travis Kelsey, I'm like, man, that's Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Tyreek Hill, that's Patrick Mahomes. Like, I'm serious. I'm in here with the Honey Badger, too. You know, and so once I got through that, that stage, it's like, okay, now it's time to get to work. It's time to get to business. And then, like I said, man, they took me under their wings. And, you know, we clone a lot, man. It, it's like a whole uh, children's playground in the locker room, man. <laughs> it's just Everybody's just a clown, man. <laughs> what is now your situation there? Uh, I know you were signed. What is the uh, future? Is it still signed with Kansas City or uh, decisions to make or what? No, I'm back with Kansas City, man. Once uh, after that game, um, the Bengals game, the next day I resigned with them for a three-year deal with them. And um, at, at the moment right now, I'm on a 53-man roster. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I have to just uh, hold my position, even if it don't go as planned. Which, you know, I don't like talking like that, but I still be a, I still be a chief either way I go. Mark Vital again was a part of the national championship. You did get your ring, I guess, on yeah. Saturday. Um, it's been a long time. They've had that out for a little bit. What was that like to finally have the time to get here? But also, once you saw it and put it on. Man, did you hear that? Oh, that crowd was crazy. Oh, uh, man. It was, I forgot I even out there to get a ring. The crowd had shook me so much. I had goosebumps. I wanted to just grab a ball and go duck it on Texas. And, <laughs> but, man, no, when, I, <laughs> when, I got my, when I got my ring, man, like I said, man, I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, this is where I worked for my, all these five years, the blood, sweat, tears, you know, from Ishmael to Tweety to everybody telling me in my ear, man, you could be the one to kind of change this culture. And it happened, and I slept with it on, bro. I slept with it. <laughs> <I'm>, <laughs> I slept with it on. I put it on this morning too. I, I put it on every day to remind me that I'm a winner. It's pre- it's pretty big. It's pretty heavy. 
Uh, no, it's it's, kind of, it's it's heavy. No, it's, I got to hold it with two fingers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you've had now a lot of things you've won. Did, how many rings do you have? How many? Because you won the Big Twelve <laughs> championship. Uh, what I mean, how, how do you have like a a place with all of them in a like a jewelry type cabinet or what? <laughs> I'm going to be honest, man, because Drew always had this thing where it was law of attraction. Everything he speak into existence always happened, right? So, because Drew, since I've been a, a red shirt rookie, man, that's what I call it now, uh, he always gave us rings, either if it was a tournament ring or us winning 17 games in a row, five games in a row, NIT, whatever. He always gave us rings to let us just look at it and get a feeling of it. And, man, when I say I got them all, there's so many of them. Like, one day I'm going to just take a picture. It has to be like 10 or 11 of them. Man, that's awesome. That that is awesome. What was it like just to be back to kind of get? I know you've been back. But what was it like to just kind of be back, especially for a game? Oh man, I was just I was nervous, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. I was. It's crazy because uh, you think I was just walking. I was just nervous. I was like, man, everybody gonna look at me a little different now. I'm a football player walking in here. <laughs> I, I said my weight done changed. I'm a little bigger, stronger now. You know, it just, I was just so happy to honestly be back to it at the same time. Like, man, this is my family. Uh, Waco's my second home. You know, like sooner or later, sometime uh, this summer, I'm going to be trying to do things out there, you know, to try to, like, do some stuff for the Boys and Girls Club in Waco. Or, you know, I'm going to do something. That's like my second home. That'd be well, awesome. That'd be awesome. Uh, have, you have probably not had time to see the documentary Ode to Joy that's been uh, released. It's a three-part series. You know all about it. So what was the true story about Gonzaga and the champagne bottles? Man, I went, I think I went down there, like, when I was going down there, I went down there to grab some food, man. I went down there uh, one late night to get some food from an Uber Eats, uh, DoorDash uh, type deal, and went down there and trying to get some food. And next thing you know, I see, like, these champagne coming in, and I'm acting like, uh, who's that for? Because, you know, all the teams are leaving. So I'm like, okay, they ordering champagne. They're about to chill, whatever. I'm a little curious, but they said it's for Gonzaga. And when that happened, it was like, what? They're like, yeah, they said they're going to try to bring it on the court and do something like uh, nobody ever done before and do the champagne on the court type thing. And, well, that kind of pissed me off. Kind of. Kind of. Kind of. Yeah, that, 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 that kind of that lathered you guys up. There's no question about it, and you took care of business. Mark, thank you. It was great to see you. Uh, hope you're doing well, and, and enjoy the off season. and uh, hope to see you again soon. Yeah, thank you so much, man. I might try to catch that TCU game or something like that. You know, sooner or later in Waco, I'm going to be doing events and different stuff like that also, so. I keep you guys posted on it, man. Yeah, you know, you can swing through here uh, yeah. for a sit down yeah. uh, again when you, you got something to promote. We have the Mark Vital so, yeah. uh, chair right there. And, and by the way, on any of those events, text us, let us know, and we'll publicize them for you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Mark Vital, former, uh, well, the national championship forward for Baylor, uh, was at the game Saturday when they beat Texas. Also, the thoughts about how the team has to kind of reinvent itself again because of the loss of Jonathan Chamwichachua. I, I think he's right, though. I mean, you can sit there and talk about the injury all day, but it's, I mean, now it's about what yep. you go and do. I yep. mean, you, you know, you can't sit there and dwell and, and mope about it. JTT's not coming back. He's going to be there as emotional support, and I'm sure, you know, we'll pass along his knowledge where he can. Uh, but yeah, you're just going to have to have others step up, and it's their time. And uh, if they do, and they do it well, Baylor's got a chance to go and win a bunch more games and maybe win some, some hardware and if they don't, well, then it's going to be a shorter, you know, uh, run to the end of the season. But that's all they can do. I mean, you're, you're not going to wave a magic wand and find another big man. Uh, you're not going to wave a magic wand and fix his injury. So, yeah, just all hands on deck. And, and some guys that uh, haven't been asked to step up to uh, to another level are going to have to do that in order to keep this thing going along. But, uh, yeah, it's when you'd love to have a Mark Vital on the team still. But, uh, good for him. I mean, that was cool to see him on the Chiefs' sideline, even in a moment that wasn't that fun. And, and I can imagine that's got to be pretty surreal to walk into that locker room, you know, especially being a basketball player turned football player and just to see all those Chiefs stars uh, as, as your teammates all of a sudden. But, uh, yeah, Mark is good people, and that Gonzaga story will live for forever for Baylor fans, there's no doubt.